What is going on everybody, it's Stas here and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update just like always taking a look at the S&P 500, the Dow Jones and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update talking about what I did in the markets today as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now in the month of November in 2019. And as you guys read in the title, we are also going to be talking about good old YouGas and natural gas because we got some numbers today from the natural gas report you guys ended up dumping so i'm looking at you guys now and i'm thinking is this a dip buy i want to talk to you guys about that and my feelings about that and kind of my opinion here in the next couple of minutes but before we do get into that all i ask from you is if you enjoy this video feel free to go down below hit that like button consider subscribing if you want to see further content for me and join our strive smart discord group Group chat and our Strive Smart Facebook group, as well as all the social media links. Those are linked down below in the description box. So, without further ado, guys, let's get started with the SP 500 here today, which hit an all time high almost at 3,100 bucks. It hit 3097.77, which is that fresh all time high before pulling down to about 3085, closing the day up $8.40, up point. Two seven percent, And if you guys watched my video yesterday, we kind of predicted this, right? We kind of predicted that the S&P had potential um, to push up, right? Based on the closing pattern that we saw being pretty, pretty bullish, right? And we can see that here on the five day, five minute. If we look at it, you can see how we kind of closed on a nice little upswing, breaking us out of this downwards trending pattern that we were on for about three trading days. I believe this started on um, the 4th, which was Monday, um, headed into Tuesday. We sold off, headed into Wednesday, and this was all a part of that sell-off that we were talking about last week since the market was very, very overbought. And we found a bottom, it seems like, yesterday at about 3066, which happens to be a previous resistance, and we closed on that strong note, like I said. So I figured if we gap up, if we see you know, the futures pushing up in the morning, that's going to signal a nice little bullish pop, and um, that's exactly what we got, right? We hit that all-time high again, and this is mostly because we got some news um, regarding the trade war between the U.S. and China, and let me read something off my phone very quickly for you guys um, about that. So China said it had agreed with the United States to remove tariffs in phases, while state-owned Chinese news agency said Beijing was also considering removing restrictions on poultry inputs and these are uh, imports rather. And these are the tariffs that are scheduled for December fifteenth. And we all know at this point, guys, whenever we get some optimism surrounding the trade war, you know tariffs tariff removals, trade negotiations are going well. The market loves that, right? So the market gapped up aggressively. We hit that all-time high before selling off, and it seems like now we're holding this old resistance at about 3084, 3085 as a new support, as well as that 180 SMA support um, here on the five-day, five-minute. So this, in my opinion, is still looking extremely bullish, and it kind of looks like what we did yesterday yesterday where we held uh, a previous resistance as a support before gapping up. So this is a point in time where I'd be watching this to go maybe back up to that all-time high, break that all-time high, maybe even get into the $31 range. That is if we end up popping up in terms of the futures tomorrow and if we end up just riding back up into the 3090 level in general. So that's kind of what I'm thinking on the S&P 500 here. Going to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, guys. And if we go to this five-day, five-minute on this chart, we can see it's very similar. We hit an all-time high today at 27,000. Three sevens. Uh, that, that must be good luck, guys. $27,774.67. That's actually four sevens. So that's 
extra good luck there. So we pulled down from there, actually, heading into the close, and we still ended up holding a higher low on top of that 180 SMA as a support, and on top of old resistances as new supports as well. So this is looking extremely bullish, right? We got a bullish cross, 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA, and um, yeah, there's really not much to say. Up 182 points, up 0.7%, just a very, very solid, strong green day out of the Dow Jones today. And one earnings report that's um, critical is going to be Disney, guys. Disney's reporting earnings today if I'm not mistaken, and oh my goodness, guys, this thing is running, oh man, is it running, is it, huh, one day, one minute, take a look at that, 132 up to 138, they must have crushed earnings, I'll take a look at that in a little bit here, because Disney was on the schedule for today's video, but back to the Dow Jones, this can definitely affect the Dow Jones after hours, I'm sure it's already, right, yep, we can see it's moving a bit here after hours in terms of uh, uh, the future here, so that's a good sign and something to keep an eye out for um, for tomorrow's session, that's really all I have to say in terms of the Dow, not much more, um, you know, taking a look at the NASDAQ here, up 20 25 points, up 0.3%, not as good of a day in terms of, uh, uh, you know, compared to the S&P and the Dow Jones, but nonetheless, it was a green day here. Um, actually, did it do better than the S&P? My short-term memory is shot, guys. Um, no, pretty much in line with the S&P, um, what the NASDAQ ended up closing at, but still pretty good green day here um, in terms of the NASDAQ, up 0.3%, up 25 bucks on the day. Going to the four-hour chart, we're holding the uptrend beautifully, right? We're at all-time highs. Um, did we hit an all-time high today? Um, yes, we did. 82.82 is that all-time high um, on the NASDAQ. And at this point, guys, it seems like this kind of wants to sell off um, based on this red candlestick I'm seeing on the four-hour. So keep an eye if we pull down to that 50 SMA on this four-hour chart, which has been a support over the past couple of weeks and months on the NASDAQ. You know, we might pull down, hold that before continuing the uptrend. Um, you know, that's kind of what I'm seeing right now based on the, uh, the price action, based on on the hourly chart, though, we are holding the 50 SMA, so I'd watch this chart first. If we break the 50 SMA on the hourly chart, we may be going down to that 180 SMA on the hourly chart, which, going back to that 4-hour chart, will probably equate roughly to where this 50 SMA is on the 4-hour chart, right? Which is why it's super important to look at a bunch of different time frames, a bunch of different charts, because you know, the technicals do look different, um, you know, on the 5 hour chart or the five minute chart rather um, you know the hourly chart the four hour chart etc etc so that's pretty much it for the market update portion of the video today guys let me know down below in the comments what are your thoughts my thoughts like I said I think the market's bullish. I think we're going to continue to go up here in the short term, like I've been saying over the past couple of weeks. So what did I do in the session today, guys? Today was a crazy day for me, and let me explain what ended up happening. So I got lucky today, guys. I'll be completely honest. Today was one of those days that my trade went exactly to plan. And this was a trade in UGAS, ticker symbol UGAZ, which is what we're going to focus on a lot in this video. So let me explain to you what I did. On the five-day, five-minute chart here, um, actually, let's, let's rewind a bit to the hourly chart. We can see that $18, $18, $18.30, roughly $18.50, this general area is a level of support based on the channels that we've drawn out here, right? We can see, you know, naturally, Natural gas, or not really natural gas, you guys has broken above 15 bucks, right? We've broken above 16, which these are all levels of resistance, right? You know, we've broken above um, that $18 level. We hit all the way up to nearly 21 bucks. And this momentum, right, has brought us up to new levels of support, right? To, uh, to new levels of support to analyze pretty much, right? And now that we started to 
pull down from this 21 level of resistance, which we failed to break out of, this was the next level of support that I was watching, $18.30, like I mentioned, right? And what did we hold pre-market today? We held that 1830 level of support, and we actually started climbing heavily in the pre-market session, right? We bottomed out here, held that support nicely, and we started to climb pretty much ever since 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is about three, three and a half hours um, before the market opens up here on the East Coast, right? So we started to climb up. We broke moving averages, 50 SMA crossed above the 180 SMA, and I actually built a pretty, it wasn't an insane position, I'll be honest guys, it was more of kind of money that I was willing to gamble through the report, because the natural gas report today was today at 10.30 a.m., so I put an amount of money in that I was like, okay, this is an amount of money that, obviously I'm not willing to lose a lot of this money, but I'm willing to hold it through the report, right, and I put money in starting at about 18.60, right, 18.60 is where I bought in pre-market hours, and as we were climbing up, what was happening here? I was building a buffer, right? I was building a profit buffer heading into the report, which was honestly probably the main reason why I had the guts to hold through the report, because at this point, I was already up at 19.15 is right where the price was before the report. I was already up about 2.6% on my position, so I was like, what's the worst that can happen? Happen here, right? I set a limit order, a limit sell at about nine. I think it was like nineteen bucks or something. So if the report were to dump, you guys, I would have, I would have gotten a profit anyway. So at this point, you know, I was in it for the potential spike, um, you know, that, that that we could get based on the report. Actually, that's wrong. I had an OCO bracket order because I had a limit sell and a limit, um, um, well, a limit sell for uh, the upside here and a stop, uh, a stop loss, right? So we ended up flying up and guess where I had my limit sell, guys? You won't believe it. Literally at $20.51. I'm not even joking. And where the stock or the ETN rather, where did it peak? right at 2051. This is one of those trades that was to the T. It went to the T. It's crazy that the peak of the day for you guys was 2051. That's where my limit was, and that's where I got the profits um, locked in, really, after that report at 1030 to about 1031 a.m. So the move in total, guys, was pretty crazy, right? It was from 1860 up to about 2051, exactly on the dot, right, which was where my limit sell was, and that was about a 9 to 10% gain, which is absolutely insane, right? And this is not typically how I trade, um, you know, you guys and D guys. I don't like holding through the report um, a lot, but again, I, I traded an amount of money here that I was kind of willing to not gamble. I don't really like that word, but I was willing to hold through the report with this amount of money. And again, because I had that buffer built, if I did not have a buffer built, I probably would would not have held through the report. But the fact that I was already up 2-3% heading into the report and I had that bracket order that protected me on the downside, um, I felt comfortable. So I took that 9-10% and this could segue into what happened today with natural gas and you gas because honestly from the trading perspective of my day, that's all I ended up doing today. So let's just transition into what happened with you gas and natural gas. So we all know at this point natural gas and um you gas, they're typically and D gas at that at this at this matter, right? They're usually very volatile on Thursday because at 10:30 a.m. Eastern Standard, there's a natural gas inventory report, right? So before we talk about that, let's take a look at the technicals here on natural gas. We peaked at about 290. We sold down to about 277, um, which is a support here, which is honestly another reason why I got into you guys this morning, because it was holding this level nicely. And honestly, from this point, we haven't really done anything. So which is why I kind of want to see tomorrow, do we hold this? Do we end up selling off even 
even further, maybe playing with that 50 SMA before running up. But ultimately, I think this could be a dip buy, um, especially with cold weather coming and demand supposed to be jacking up here um, for uh, natural gas over the next couple of weeks, which we all know happens in the winter months. So at this point, uh, natural gas is trending between 276 and 290. This could be a nice level of support heading into tomorrow, right? So what ended up moving natural gas today? Let me pull up this right here. The U.S. Energy Information Administration reported Thursday that domestic supplies of natural gas rose by 34 billion cubic feet for the week ended November 1st. That was smaller than the build of 39 billion cubic feet expected on average by analysts polled by S&P Global Platts. So this is why natural gas saw that initial spike and this is why you guys ended up running because pretty much the injection of 34 billion cubic feet was less than what was expected, right? And over these next couple of weeks, as demand starts to kick in, as we start to get withdrawals from uh, natural gas, and as we start to get colder weather, which if I pull up that little portion of my notes here, according to Nat Gas Weather of November 7th to November 13th, a strong cold shot will continue to drop down the plains and into Texas and the south today with increased showers. The system will stretch across the east central U.S. with increasing rain and snow as it tracks into the east coast tonight and Friday. With lows of zeros to thirties behind the cold front across the plains, midwest, and northeast, national demand will jump in the days ahead, right? So a lot of things are going on here. You know, the weather can start getting colder. Demand's going to start to come in, right? We're going to start to see withdrawals of natural gas. And what What's that going to do, guys? That's going to spike up the price of natural gas. And there's a lot of short positions right now on natural gas. I forget how many. There was a statistic that I saw. And once they cover, guys, this can end up spiking and squeezing the price of natural gas up as well. So in the title, you saw, is you guys a dip buy right now? I definitely think it's a dip buy, right? We saw natural gas, the price action here. This is looking very bullish. It's simply a retracement, right? From 290 down to 277. Again, we're holding that support. We're at the bottom of this channel. Ideally, what would I, what would I like to see? Well, I'd like to see a pop a hold above 277 being that support and the 50 SMA and a pop above, you know, 290 heading towards the $3 range. That would be ideal right now for you guys. And how does that equate over to you guys, guys? Well, very simple here. We saw the retracement of natural gas. You guys got pulled down to 1830. No need to repeat myself, right? At this point, if natural gas does make that pop to three bucks, this thing can definitely go back to 20 and it can definitely start to make make its way back up to $23 as it did a couple of weeks ago, kind of during that false rally period that we saw, um, you know, towards the end of August into the month of September. So overall, guys, that is my opinion right now on you guys, um, natural gas, kind of some numbers of what happened and whether or not I personally think it's a dip buy right now. And now what I want from you guys is let me know down below in the comments, what do you think? Is this a dip buy right now? I'd love to know what you guys have to think about that. Are you staying away from you guys, natural gas, or do you think natural gas and you guys will be running up here over the next couple of days? So a couple of other stocks that I want to talk about very quickly are Disney. Like I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, Disney was a company that was going to report earnings today. They obviously crushed earnings based on the stock's performance. Let's take a look very quickly quickly right here um, at the live news tab to see what they did end up doing um, in terms of their earnings. We can see here their EPS came in at $1.07. That beat the $0.95 cent estimate. That's a very nice beat there in EPS, but their sales did miss $19.1 billion versus $19.19 billion expected. So it doesn't seem like the stock cares too much about um, that, that revenue miss. It's 
it seems like it's really running on this EPS beat, and uh, must I say, that is a pretty sweet EPS beat right there on Disney. So, let's draw some levels of resistance out very quickly, now that we are spiking, um, where are we approaching, right? We're approaching back up to that 142 level, and speaking of Disney, I just got um, a Robinhood notification, okay, yeah, they beat EPS by 13%, like we just talked about, that is very amazing, so at this point, this could be a tradable, um, um, you know, stock, in my opinion, heading forward, right, on this positive earnings report, we could potentially be going up to 142, which is a very strong resistance on Disney, right, the next one I'm seeing is about 145, 147 bucks, roughly, I guess you can say those are two separate resistances, so might as well draw both lines out um, to make it simple on ourselves, and that's really what I'm thinking, right? Maybe we start to pull down a bit, but probably not too much at this point. Maybe we pull down to about 136, 137, but honestly, this can fly straight up based on this EPS um, beat that we just saw. So watch for that first level, 142. We could even get there um, probably not tomorrow, but maybe next week um, in terms of Disney stock, making it a very attractive stock to be watching right now. Another one is at V guys ticker symbol ATVI they're reporting earnings right now let's take a look if they reported already um, taking a look at this hourly chart it seems like the stock is running up down up down after hours um, really not I guess you can say it's moving more to the downside continuing its downtrend from the entire day today but if we pull up this we can see their earnings Wow EPS came in at 32 cents, which beats the 23 cent estimate. Wow, that's a massive beat right there. Holy smokes, guys. 121, uh, uh, 100, or no, 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 what am I saying, guys? 1.21 billion revenue versus 1.17 estimates. So, okay, earnings came in very, very strong there. You know, the initial earnings from ATVI. So, this one, guys, okay, we talked about this in yesterday's video. We need to see see their guidance raised in my opinion because they've been their guidance in general at V's they've, they've been doing very poor over the past couple of quarters we all know their revenue has been crappy their guidance has been low so what I said in yesterday's video what can raise the stock in the short term EPS beat revenue beat which we just got as well as a raised guidance from the management team this is going to be huge and I think it can propel the stock back up to that six $60 level, which we can see here, and I just got an at V notification about their earnings call. Might hop on that right after I uh, film this video, but we can see here, you know, 55 bucks, 56, 57, right where we are now. That's a resistance, right? And if we break out, which this earnings report could be the catalyst, you know, of us breaking out, we could be heading up to that 60, 62, $63 level, which is the resistance of the next channel here. So at V, I'm loving loving it guys at me I'm loving this hopefully in their earnings report um, or the conference call rather they reiterate that guidance I'm going to look into this right after I film this video um, to really see if I can end up trading this tomorrow if it sets up based on what what I hear in that conference call so at me Disney you guys those are the three main ones that I'm watching at this point McDonald's is another one that I'm currently in but I don't want to spend too much time on it, it really didn't do much to today at all. Um, I'm simply just holding my shares in terms of McDonald's. What's another stock, guys? Roku's another one that reported earnings yesterday. The stock ended up tanking 16%. Like I said, guys, this is a stock that's going to go up or down massively on earnings, which is why I don't really mess with these speculative stocks on earnings, and this is my point proven, right? Down 16%. If you were to buy the dip here expecting to go up, you'd be crushed right now. Now. So Roku, it's dipping very hard right now. Um, you know, on the four hour chart, I'm not really seeing um, this looking as an, an attractive pattern. This is not attractive to me at all. But if we hold 110, 112, maybe we start to maybe reverse back up from there. Then we can start talking about Roku. But at this point, I'm going to give it a couple of days, uh, maybe even a week or two to, to wiggle out and see what it does from there. But that's pretty much it, guys. I don't want to uh, 
spend too much time, um, you know, going over these stocks. I wanted to really focus on at the Disney and, uh, you know, uh, you guys for this video. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me, and don't forget to join our Strive Smart Discord group chat and our Strive Smart Facebook group, as well as all of the other Instagrams, the the, the Twitter. Um, what else do I have down there? Pretty much just Instagram and Twitter. Oh, and the Strive Smart merch if you guys do want to support as well. Everything is linked down below. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. As always. Peace out.